Okay, so in this video, we'll see how we can represent some sort of three, three data structure in our relational database. Uh, this should work in any relational database if you are up to date. But I'm going to use Postgres for that. And I'm going to be following something similar to this uh, tutorial in this website. I will put a link in the description. This is one of my favorite websites about SQL. It has the same like kind of tutorial for each kind of relational database, Postgres, MySQL, uh, I think also SQL Server. Um, yeah, so let's actually start by looking at a simple ER diagram. Uh, it's this ER diagram. So I have a single table in my database called employees. Each employee can ha can be a supervisor or on one or more employees. And this is and this is represented by this relationship. So the employees has a re have a relationship with itself and that, that relation is one to many. That's why you will see we have the supervisor ID. This is a foreign key, references the same table. And let's actually look at the data. This will make much more sense. So we, the first user we have uh, does not have any supervisor ID, which means this does like this user does not report to anyone, which you can think about it. This is the root user we have. Uh, this could be parent and child uh, relationship, like grandfather, grandparent, and uh, keep going up so we have now all of the like employees that reports to this root user are these as you can see they all share the same supervisor id which is two the id of this guy so all of these are directed children of this root employee now we have these two that reports to five which is which is this like this record so these will be children to this like employee node in the tree now we have the last one is this, uh, like the username is GitHub, but this guy reports to the supervisor of ID seven, which is this one. So if you think about it, you can actually just draw it in a piece of paper. This represents a tree somehow. Uh, but querying this is not that easy because if I said, hey, get me all the employees that will at some point have to report to this guy here, no matter how like, in the hierarchy or in the level of the trees um, they are so for example if i ask you does this guy report somehow at some point uh, to this or what the answer should be yes but querying this is querying this kind of like relationship is not that easy right so luckily we have this thing called recursive cte cte stands for common table expressions they are like they give you or one of their best features. They give you uh, a more descriptive way to write your queries. Uh, they will look like more, much more nicer and much more readable. That's like maybe the big uh, one of the big uh, like benefits of using CTEs. But another thing you, that that you can use recursive queries with them. And let's actually just look at this. Uh, like uh, this is the basic structure for each recursive CTE query. We will start by defining a CTE and adding this recursive like uh, statement here. And this like this defines two queries. The first one is the non-recursive term. This query will run only a single time, and it will be the starting point for our uh, sorry for our like recursive queries. And we will union all all the results from all the other recursive queries we will run. And this is the definition for the recursive query. And one thing to remember, each result from each recursive query will be the input to the next iteration uh, while querying. So the first output from here will be the, like the input to the next iteration, then the input to the next next iteration and so on. So this is basically a recursive like queries. And the where statement here, you should definitely have a where statement. This is this will be the stopping condition. When we don't have any records, the recursive calls will stop. Uh, if you, if we keep getting records, or if you forgot to add a where statement, you will see like uh, maximum stack exceeded, uh, this kind of errors. Um, yeah, I think in the code, it will make much more sense. So here I'm gonna have my SQL script. Just gonna make sure you can see it. Okay. Okay, so first thing, I'm gonna type with recursive, let's just copy that, yeah. I'm going to name my CTE employee tree and at the end I'm going to just select the star from my employees tree so I'm going to construct that tree 
and my goal here to get all the employees that at some point will need to report uh, to this guy with an, with an ID too. So if you go, if you like go to the each node and just keep going up, they will all uh, reach this guy. So this is the ID here. I hope it's clear. So select, I'm going to say star for now from employee, sorry, employees. This is the name of my table. I'm going to call it E1, where E1 dot ID will be equal to two. This is the like the supervisor we are looking for, right? So union all, like concatenate all the results from all the recursive queries with the set with the first one. Um, I'm gonna enter here. So select also start for now. I'm gonna change that from employees. I'm gonna call this E2. Now to get the result from the previous iteration, I'm gonna join. This is very interesting. I'm gonna join this table with the CTE result, and you can actually do that. It's like it's a little bit confusing, but you can do it. And this is how you get the uh, like the previous iteration uh, values. You can join on them and behave on them. That's like this is the most important part. I'm gonna call this ET. Now I need to do to join. The, the joining condition will be the following. Uh, remember the first time. We will start with this record returned from here or this data returned from here. So I'm going to say, uh, and it will be the result here, right? When you join it, this table will contain the first result from here. So I'm going to say where et.id will be equal to e2, which is the employees table that I'm joining on, to supervisor id. And the first iteration, this will be where, like, this will resolve to two. And I'm going to search where all the supervisor ids is equal to two. Uh, I hope it's clear. But the next iteration, I'm gonna do the same thing for the next uh, set of employees. I'm gonna search, like for example, I'm gonna get the first time. I'm gonna get all of these. Uh, so I'm gonna search for each one of them if we have another like employees that references these IDs in the supervisor ID. And that's will this will keep happening for until we don't have any records returned. So this is actually returned here like e2 dot id and e2 dot supervisor id and e2 dot username i'm gonna do the same thing here up uh, but with e1 of course obviously now this should actually work i'm just gonna like yeah i'm gonna i'm just making sure that you can see that so as you can see we are starting from this guy then we are going uh like we are basically fetching the whole tree, uh, which is very nice. But I think this this is like this. Uh, we have some sort of like missing information here, right? Maybe I need to uh, know the level for each employee in the like the tree, right? Like for this, for example, this guy. Where is the level for this guy? How this guy relates to the first like supervisor, right? Uh, I think that's very important information. Uh, but before this. If you want to get the whole tree for any other like supervisor, just change the ID here. And uh, we ha here we got the like the tree for Sarah. And actually these this these two like employees actually report to Sarah, which makes uh like which means uh, our query is valid. Now another thing, how we can actually like get the level of each employee in the queries. Uh, it's actually very interesting and very nice. So I can add here a column zero as imp level. I'm gonna say imp, yeah, just level like this. And down here, I can actually reference this variable and just say, hey, imp level. And this actually comes from employee trees. Okay. Uh, this like this table will actually contain this uh, imp level column. I'm gonna say plus one. And this is actually it. So we're starting from zero. This is the root in our current table, uh, our current tree. These are the children. So let's actually go to this uh, guy, which has like the most employees under him. So as you can see, we have the correct uh, depths or levels here. Yeah, I hope it, I hope this is this makes sense. 
uh, but like we imagine this as a recursive call we are starting from zero and each time we, for the next iteration we are passing the previous value plus one uh, that's it so i think now the third part sorry is what if i need an array of like all the parent nodes for each employee right i think that could be actually very uh, important um i yeah i will show you the code maybe you can figure out on your own how to actually maybe uh like cast this column as an array of like an actual array an actual json array because postgres supports json that will make it uh maybe on your back end easier like or faster than just looping over the result and splitting by comma and stuff like this but here i'm just gonna create a string custom like column and separate all the parent nodes with ids um so i'm gonna say where e horn i'm gonna say e1 dot id i'm gonna cast this to var car uh, i'm gonna call it as imp id because i'm gonna use it as a characters and join them by commas so i will put here like use this imp id which comes from et or uh, maybe to be more descriptive you can put et here but uh, it's fine so imp id uh, i'm gonna cast this to var car just copy it to can to concatenate in postgres you will do this like two pipes now by comma i'm gonna concatenate the previous result with the current id i have and of course don't forget to convert that into a varkar now run this um you will see that this guy only have like his id and we will start here to actually see more ids the more we go uh, in the depth of the tree so we have here of course we are adding the same like user id i think that's fine you can process that but this is like this guy will reports to all of these uh, people which is very interesting i think this is a very good result and uh, now this x like introduces a question how i can use this in my orm maybe i'm using laravel or django or whatever maybe type orm uh, yeah how i can actually use this my recommendation is i hope you can see these but as you can see in postgres in postgres we can create or actually in any relational database we can create functions store the procedures views materialized views i highly recommend that you google about this stuff uh, and basically what you will do you will create a view that actually just looks like this and or yeah it stores this query the view will store this query and you will create a model in your or orm that references this view and you will just say hey my model dot select all and it will just call this query and return to you the result this is i mean i can't show you all every like framework there but you can actually Google it. Just see how you link your ORM with a view and add this as a view on your database. So yeah, I think I'm just showing you like the basics here. Uh, this has a lot of potential. It like could really uh, like enhance your like performance. Because if you think about it, if you try to write something like this in the ORM code, for example, you will end up writing so many queries. I don't think there is an ORM that supports recursive queries. Uh, like this so i highly recommend that you like dig into this a little bit more deep and i hope this is really useful and uh, bye bye we will return to the django videos tomorrow or maybe after it